the grass withers and the flowers fade but the word of our god endures forever heaven and earth will pass away but god's word will not pass away a reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark the apostles gathered around jesus and told him all that they had done and taught he said to them come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat and they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves now many saw them going and recognized them and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them as he went to show he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things my dear friends i invite you to reflect with me on the readings of the 16th sunday in ordinary time the three readings help us to reflect on god's love and thoughtfulness towards his sheep keeping them from scattering and going astray the first reading is taken from the book of prophet jeremiah when we read carefully the prophetic literature we notice that the books of the prophets are more or less programmatically shaped and edited into a twofold assertion of god's judgment and god's restoration on one hand the prophets announce god's judgment that brings israel to exile and death but judgment is not the last word warnings of doom and disaster are always followed by promises of hope and restoration after due reparation has been done the prophets proclaim god's promise of restoration that will bring israel to a future full of hope and possibilities We observe a similar pattern in the book of Jeremiah. While we notice the frequent use of the verbs plucking up and pulling down in the first 20 chapters of the book, the verbs planting and building up appear in the later chapters, namely the book of comfort in chapters 30 to 31 and also in chapters 29 and 33. In today's first reading we have a strong indictment of the current failed shepherds of Israel who have allowed the sheep to be scattered and destroyed the prophet announces that their misdeeds and lack of responsibility shall not go unpunished the exile to babylon is inevitable and the sheep will be scattered among other nations but the good lord promises that he will shepherd his people he will raise up shepherds to gather his scattered people to look after them and pasture them the god sent shepherd will be a true king from the branch of david and he will be called the lord our integrity this true and universal king is none other than jesus christ the second reading taken from saint paul's letter to the ephesians celebrates the unity of the church achieved through the supreme sacrifice offered by jesus christ christ by shedding his own blood has united those who used to be so far apart that is the gentiles and those who were near at hand 
the Jews and united them in a new single body, the church, by reconciling them to God. Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd who gathers the scattered and lost people of God. The Gospel passage from Mark chapter 6 verse 30 to 34 reminds us that in Jesus we have a Good Shepherd to take care of us. The disciples who had been sent out on a mission returned to Jesus. Jesus, knowing that they were tired, takes them with him to a lonely place to rest for a while. Jesus being a good shepherd is protective of them. Then a large crowd who had determinedly searched for Jesus find him. Jesus welcomes them, pities them and begins to teach them. The words, they were like sheep without a shepherd is an allusion to the Israelites who after the death of Moses were like sheep without a shepherd until the appointment of Joshua as their leader. It is also an allusion to the promise of God in today's first reading. It is a promise to send shepherds to gather the scattered sheep of Israel. Jesus' role as the Good Shepherd will become clearer later with the feeding of the 5,000 in the green pastures beside the restful waters of the Lake of Galilee. Jesus felt compassion for the people. The Greek word is plunknidzomai, meaning compassion or pity carries the connotation of a visceral reaction. That is, he felt it in his guts, indicating deep and true compassion, a reaction that signals the drive to restore wholeness. It simply means to offer the best possible treatment to the person for whom I feel compassion. The Gospel text is also a reminder for us today that the foremost duty of a disciple is to be with Jesus and to feel his love and compassion. Today, let us remember that to be with Jesus is an essential part of our calling. When we are astray, let us hear the voice of Jesus our shepherd and find our way back to him. In our loneliness, let us experience the comforting presence of Jesus in our life. Let us learn to love one another the way Jesus loves us by feeling deep and true compassion that leads us to action. Let the word of God dwell in you. Join us every Friday to store up God's word in your heart.